everyone, and welcome to another episode of Raw Doctor. I'm Christina. And before we get started, I just wanted to remind you guys that you can submit more Raw Doctor images by visiting photorec.tv slash raw doctor. Um, we'd love to see some more of your images and either uh, take a shot at editing them on another Raw Doctor episode, on a future Raw Doctor episode, or on an upcoming podcast. Every podcast uh, that we do is on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, all you have to do is just grab your raw files and drop them onto this box. Uh, similarly, if you have uh, been working on the assignment for June, this month's assignment is slow shutter. Uh, you can drag those images and submit them to this box for critique. Um, we'll have that video out next month. I also wanted to remind you guys that uh, while you will probably learn some very helpful tips in this Raw Doctor episode, we have many, many more in our Lightroom tutorial series. So go ahead and head over to photorec.tv slash shop um, and uh, buy all the episodes and really learn to use Lightroom to take your images to the next level. Okay, we're gonna close that off and get started. So we have this image of a cute little chipmunk or no, squirrel or chipmunk, I can't tell. Um, I think it's chipmunk by Dalibor. And first, the first thing that I'm noticing, I guess the first thing that I'll do is apply my lens correction because that's really gonna remove distortion from the edges. Um, although it doesn't look like there was much distortion in this particular image. Um, and then I'm seeing that the image is a little bit cool. Uh, so I'm gonna warm it up. And uh, I can tell like right here in the catch light of the chipmunk, there is a little bit of blue light and then also on the top of his head um, or her head. So I'm just gonna warm it up and that was too much. So I'm gonna bring it back to a point where it sort of looks realistic to me. And I'm gonna add a little bit of tint as well to take away some of the green cast that may um, have appeared from shooting in sort of a woodsy out, outdoor scene. Okay, and I'm, I'm liking that white balance. I think that looks pretty good. I am going to sharpen this image by turning up my, or dialing up my sharpening to about 50. And uh, that's pretty good. Uh, and now I'm gonna increase my clarity slider to about, oops, that was too far, about 10. Uh, so I'm gonna just do a check, do a before and after right here, just to see what it looked like before, what it looks like now. So very minor, minor adjustments, but it's already looking a little bit better. Um, okay, I'm going to increase my vibrance as well. And as I increase my vibrance, I actually can see that, that it's still looking a little bit blue. So I'm going to dye it, turn, warm it up a little bit more. And as I'm warming it up, I like the color of the squirrel, but I'm seeing that the background's starting to look too yellow. So I'm trying to find an in-between point uh, by just sort of checking the squirrel's fur, making sure that it's warm enough, and then also not making the background look too yellow because that's not very... I don't like that very much. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is just crop it a little bit. I'm just gonna make this curl just a touch more centered. Um, really minor, but I feel like that looks a little bit better. And in fact, I think I might want the center of the squirrel's eyes to perfectly intersect this line right here just so that it feels a lot more balanced. Great, and now I am going to add contrast and maybe just lift my shadows a little bit, but at the same time, uh, I guess my black point is already set, and I don't see any pure white here, so I don't feel like I need to set my white point, and I feel like it has uh, enough contrast. So I think that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna touch it anymore. Um, another thing I might do is maybe add a little bit of a vignette, very, very subtle vignette. And let's look at what we had before we started editing. 
and what we have now. Great, and sometimes when I go back and forth after making a pretty drastic temperature adjustment, it, it kind of looks to me like, whoa, I did it way too much. Like right now when I look at the before, it looks very blue, and when I look at the after, it looks very yellow. Um, but it always, when you go from a big jump in temperature, it's always gonna be a little bit misleading. I feel like the more I look at this, after I've been looking at it for a while, if I don't have the before, sort of compare it to and contrast it against this gray background, it looks pretty uh, balanced to me. I mean, the white balance. So, um, but those are some things that you may want to in the future if you feel like the temperature change is too drastic. You might want to just leave that picture and then come back to it later um, just so that you're, you're looking at it with a fresh eye. Okay, thanks Dalibor. We're gonna move on to the next picture. So I like this picture a lot. I like the tones. Um, there's a lot of sort of uh, gunpowdery, uh, dark gray tones and kind of bluish tones. Um, the main thing I don't like about this picture is this area right here. It's just sort of taking away from everything else. Um, so first off, I'm going to uh, enable my lens correction and I think that's actually backing up to this picture this is why I may have done nothing because I didn't no it still didn't do anything okay never mind let's go back here um, so I'm enabling my uh, profile corrections and I did a little bit of uh, barrel distortion adjustment and now I'm going to dial up my clarity just to give this picture a little bit more grunginess because um, that's kind of how it, it feels to me like it's very it's kind of grungy these actually look like they could be active train tracks which totally not recommend walking on active train tracks um, but anyway uh, this picture is still pretty cool I'm going to increase my vibrance and now I'm going to go to detail and add sharpening this is pretty much the standard kind of sharpening that I do to pictures. I just turn it up to 50 and then occasionally I'll turn up the radius or um, the detail. And then if I'm working with an image that has a lot, like a face maybe, and I just want to uh, sharpen the eyes and, and some other features, then I might dial up the masking, which just reserves the sharpening to the very edges of the image and leaves larger, smooth areas unsharpened. So I'm going to go back. To my basic panel and I'm having sort of trouble deciding whether I want to brighten this picture up or darken it. Um, you know if I brighten it it's sort of I like that it brings everything um, up more it brightens everything everything looks a little bit lighter um, but I also kind of like the moodiness of maintaining the sort of dark exposure so I'm kind of undecided I think I'm just gonna leave it as is and increase the contrast a tiny bit Maybe turn, dial up the shadows and just deepen the blacks a little bit. And I want to straighten it because it looks a little bit crooked to me. I'm just worried about losing too much of this edge. But it, it, I guess that looks good. So I'm just going to straighten it a little bit more. Okay. That looks a little bit better. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do, and this is the nice thing about having... Um, the Creative Cloud subscription is that you can easily open stuff in Photoshop and edit it and then automatically sync it back to Lightroom. So I'm going to open up this picture in Photoshop and I'm going to try to quickly clone out those people in the background because I tried to do it with Lightroom before and it didn't do a very good job. So I'm going to select my lasso tool, probably zoom in and select first this person, right click, fill content aware, and it did a pretty crappy job. So I'm gonna undo that, and maybe I will actually select all of this and then see if it does a better job. And this is the thing about these tools is that sometimes they work super, super well, and then sometimes, like in this situation, they are awful. They don't work at all. 
So I'm going to actually try and use my healing brush tool instead and just try to do it manually because the automatic tools unfortunately aren't working super well. So I'm going to sample by holding down the Alt key uh, if you're on Windows or Option key if you're on Mac and sampling from this area right here and sort of covering this. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. Here's a tip for you guys if you're doing this. I like to, as much as I can, do non-destructive editing on my pictures. So one thing that I will often do is I will create a new layer on top of my original layer. And when I have my brush selected, my healing selected, I'm going to sample from current and below or all layers. And that's gonna sample my background layer as well as this layer. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to make these changes on the uh, layer that I just created. So if I mess up or I want to undo, I can just turn this off and then turn it back on just to see. So I'm all for non-destructive editing in Photoshop and the reason that I love Lightroom so much is that you can always just uh, go back to your original photo and uh, you don't actually destroy any pixels. So I'm not doing the very best job right now. I'm, I'm trying to do it quickly, but um, just to give you an idea of what you can do here. And you know, I'm realizing now that this woman in the background is sort of blocking the, the tracks from where they sort of converge to a point in the background. And so as I correct her, I am going to sort of lose that. But I'm okay with that because um, this, she's so small in the background, this air is so small in the background that it's not gonna be very noticeable. You're gonna be looking at the subject and not so much the train tracks. So I don't have to do a perfect job here. I just have to do enough of a job that this doesn't catch the audience's eye, the viewer's eye. All right, so I'm gonna zoom out and just check my picture and see. Um, so I didn't do the cleanest job ever because I was trying to do it quite quickly, but um, you know I could easily spend another like 15 minutes or so trying to clone this. But I am fairly happy that it's no longer distracting. So this is what we had before, and you can easily tell that you know this person he's not only looking at this which leads your eye to go to it um, but the black contrasting the black of her dress contrasting with like the lighter pebbles and the green in the background is um, is sort of distracting whereas now you just kind of look at you know the train tracks and if anything you question why do they kind of end there um, so so I'm pretty happy with that. Another thing that you could do if you want to be pretty fancy is you could uh, sort of clone the train tracks and paste them. Uh, so I'm going to, I just made a selection around the train tracks and I copied from the background layer and I'm going to make sure that this is on top of that. Um, and now I'm going to right click, no, nope, I'm going to go to edit, transform, and warp. Nope, not warp. Edit, transform, scale first. And I'm going to zoom in. And of course now I have the legs again, so that's kind of inconvenient. But you could also just sample an area from... Uh, this area where there aren't any uh, any legs. Okay, just trying to get it to match the perspective. And now I'm going to distort 
and sort of actually switch it down a little bit. Great. And I could select a blend mode um, that would hopefully just help it blend in with the green and I can just go through all of these. I think maybe lighten or screen, maybe overlay. I think I like lighten. Um, yeah, and so again, super quick and not super clean, but this gives you an idea of the possibilities that Photoshop gives you uh, when you're trying to clone something out and still make it look realistic. Okay, I'm going to save this by hitting Command S or going to File, Save. And this is automatically going to create a copy in Lightroom with the adjustments I just made in Photoshop. And so I can go back from the original to add uh, that Photoshop copy. Great, and I can always go back to Photoshop and sort of tweak my adjustments uh, and always go back to the original. I can always go back to the original because I made non-destructive edits. Okay, uh, now I guess we should probably go to the before here and show you the after. Okay, and now we're going to move to our last picture. And to me, this picture looks a little bit flat, so I'm just going to try to um, make it pop a little bit more. Uh, again, first thing is enable lens corrections and add some detail by sharpening the image. Now I'm going to add some clarity. And I'm going to increase my vibrance a good bit because I want the sky to look a bit more saturated, maybe even add some saturation, but I'm not going to go past this because I don't want the sky to look super duper blue. That just doesn't look realistic. And sometimes I find that if you try to warm up the sky, it can end up looking kind of yellow and it doesn't look very good. So I'm just going to leave the original white balance as is. I'm gonna make this a little bit brighter and I wanna bring a little bit more detail in the shadows. So I'm gonna turn up my shadows, my highlights down and add a little bit more contrast. Great, and I think that's all I would do to this picture. So it's not a super drastic change but it still makes a really, really good difference. Okay, and that is all for this episode. Uh, please submit more of your images. We love seeing them. And um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, and thank you very much.